Today we're going to go ahead and replace the spark plug wires on this 2006 Chevy Impala with 3.5 liter V6 engine. Now this vehicle's got close to 170,000 miles on it and by looking at the, the plug wires that are on here currently we see the numbers on here which typically indicates that these are the original plug wires. Certainly well past uh, the expected life cycle on these components here. So it's time to do a tune up here and replace the plug wires along with uh, spark plug. It's always important to do, uh, do them in correlation with each other. We don't want to just replace the spark plug wires and leave the old plugs in case there's any type of carbon tracking uh, or vice versa. We want to replace the entire secondary system here altogether. So I've got my set of wires here and you can see they're kind of laid out here or packaged uh, kind of in a manner where we've got the short ones uh, which are going to be for the back side of the engine and we've got the long ones which are going to go towards the front side of the engine. And so they're kind of separated already here and there's a little bit of tape kind of holding them together so I'll use a, a pick, uh, you might want to use a knife or scissors as well to very carefully separate these. We don't want to poke them but it's kind of nice to keep them separated and laid apart and even though we have these long ones, they're all going to be a little bit of a unique length. And so I'm going to set aside the longest one to go to number two cylinder here, which is the longest reach. So let's start the job by removing the oil fill cap, which is going to allow me to remove the engine cover. I'll put that back down on here so no debris falls in there. Then, next thing I'm going to do is take either a pocket screwdriver, in this case I'm just using my uh, little pick, and I'm going to gently release the plastic hold down clips here, which hold the plug wires in place. Now I'll remove them and kind of set them aside and save them for later. It's always nice to do a professional job and clip these wires in place, uh, keep them out of the way so they don't fall against the exhaust, get burned or damaged in any shape or, or manner. So, one choice is to go ahead and rip them all off and then hope we've got, got them uh, in the right place here because it is very important to uh, reinstall the new wires in the exact same location that the old wires came off. But as I look here, so I've got number two, which is pretty straightforward, came off here. Uh, we could do one plug wire at a time. It's certainly a very feasible solution. Uh, or refer to a guide, uh, as you see shown on the screen here, I could find this in service information, which is an outlay of the coil, it lets me know where each plug wire goes to uh, the corresponding tower on the coil. So, with that in mind, I'm going to go ahead and remove the even numbered cylinders, 2, 4, and 6, which are on the front side of the engine here, remove these ones, and I will go ahead and with a, a slight twisting motion, try and break the boot free, apply some pressure here, and remove it from the spark plug. Now, it's not uncommon in an application such as this where we've had uh, high mileage on these for them to be very difficult to come off, and in some cases, we might have to use some pliers or pull a little different uh, to get them off. But these ones are coming off relatively easy. So, I'm gonna remove these, I'm gonna replace the spark plugs, then it'll be time to reinstall these ones, and then we'll go towards the back side of the vehicle. All right, now that we've got all the old plug wires off and I've gone ahead and replaced all the spark plugs, it's time to start reinstalling our new plug wires. So as I grab my old ones here, uh, I've got the ones that came off the, the rear bank of the engine, cylinders one, three, and five. Now I can kind of take my new wires and match them up by length to the ones that came off of here. So you can see number one is the shortest lead that came off. And as I kind of line up the, the spark plug end and look here, I've got one of these that's definitely shorter than the others. And the other two are pretty much equal. So now I've compared these two. Now this is going to be my number one. And then three and five will be pretty much equal length and I'll install them appropriately. And then I'll do the same thing again when it comes to installing cylinders two, four, and six. 
Uh, we see we've got one that's noticeably longer. I suspect that's going to be going to cylinder number two here, but we'll match that up when I get to this side. So I'm going to go ahead and sneak my hands on the back side here, install cylinders one, three, and five. And then we'll pick it up again as we install two, four, and six. All right, well, now I've got the rears done. I'm going to go ahead with the even cylinders here on the front side. So I'm going to take my longer of the three leads here and kind of install it in place. I had to move it a little bit to make sure I feel where the metal clip is over the spark plug. And then I'm going to lock it in place. We want to feel that positive click there. And then I'll kind of loosely put it in the, the loom here and we'll slide it back. And then we're going to go um, on the back side here to where we see uh, cylinder number two is. And so we'll install it here. So then I will install cylinder number four. It's always good in practice. You know, I could just quick put them all right here, but this way it's a little easier to do install them one at a time, clip them in the loom properly here, and then put them on the appropriate coil tower so I don't get them mixed up and create a misfire. So again, we look for that positive click, make sure we got them locked in place. Install them in the proper location. And we'll kind of equalize them here. Remember I had this other connector that came off, so I will uh, slide that in place. Make sure they're all installed properly, nice and evenly, and lock them in place. Now, the final step is going to be to reinstall the cover here. Then I need to uh, start the vehicle, verify that I don't have any misfires, uh, make sure everything is installed properly, which I'm fairly certain it is because of the method in which we did it and clear out any trouble codes that may have been stored by a previously misfiring ignition system. Hopefully now you understand what it takes to install a spark plug wire set on a GM 3.5 liter engine.